All right, I'll go ahead and get started on this uh, on this presentation here. Um, so I'll be hitting on the uh, talking about the animal relations with Japanese chaff flower in the native and invaded ranges. All right. So we'll be going over a little outline here. So we're going to be going over what are the known animal interactions with Japanese chaff flower in its native and invaded ranges. Um, also talk about animals as the disper dispersal vectors. Uh, how are they spreading it? And then any pathogens and insects that are known right now. And then talk about some preventative measures to avoid any spread in the future. Just an overview. I'm, I'm uh, Nick Seaton with the Rouge River Cooperative Weed Management Area, and this is out of Southern Illinois. Um, this was established over in 2006, and I'm the coordinator for this program. Um, we're working with uh, the objectives are education and awareness, organization and capacity building, uh, coordinated control efforts, and then research as well. And uh, based out of the uh, Southern 11 counties, and uh, so Jeff Flower has been found in. Um, all these counties and is uh, spreading all over the place. And I start off with this uh, photo that uh, Chris also used of uh, Japanese chaff flower growing in Japan. And uh, you can see that it's just growing right off the side of the road. It's actually listed as a common species in the Japanese flora too. And you can imagine as you uh, would pass by this infestation, it would brush up against your leg and uh, be able to spread some seeds. You can also see too that this is uh, growing alongside with uh, Chinese yam as well, another one of our uh, invasive plants. And then very similar picture, but this photo was taken right off the banks of the Ohio River. And you can see similar situation where uh, there's a road here where people might be walking at uh, dogs or uh, people would just be walking by and would be able to easily brush up against some of this, uh, these plants here when they're in seed and then just spread it uh, to either their property or just down the road. And um, so I did some research on um, different interactions with animals in the native range uh, where chaff flower grows over in Japan. And what I found was, uh, this study here, uh, which studied the uh, habits of macaw monkeys. So uh, this study went to this, uh, the, this island here and uh, documented every plant that was growing on the island. And one of the plants that was consumed by these macaw monkeys was Acaranthes japonica. And also um, as they were eating it, the, the seeds were able to, uh, they can stick to the, uh, the fur of these monkeys and be able to spread it that way. And so that would be a way that chaff flower in its native range is able to spread itself around. Now there are other herbivores in Japan. Um, you have the psychodeer and the saro, or the saro. Uh, however, the saro uh, seems to live in higher elevations and um, on the studies I found on the diet of the saro did not um, come up with anything about the uh, consumption of acaranthes. So um, that does not seem to be um, uh, enjoying eating that. But the psychid deer has really similar uh, dietary habits to um, our white-tailed deer and um, grazes through the forest. Uh, and so this is likely uh, one of the other uh, herbivores in Japan that consumes Japanese chaff flower. I thought this study was really interesting. So this kind of hits on um, the question that came up earlier. Uh, and this was looking at the interaction with Japanese chaff flower growing on the Pacific Islands and uh, these storm petrels that were being negatively impacted by the growth of chaff flower by their nests. And so as they were coming in, they became entangled in the chaff flower seeds and were unable to grow, uh, unable to fly away. And so this was a really interesting study. And um, there it was uh, the swin hose storm petrel was the type of bird that it was. Now uh, we have some photos here of the bird. Its nest was underneath this uh, carex that was growing here, carex 
Budiana. Uh, and right here are some photos of it after it had been stuck and unfortunately uh, had died. Some interesting things about um, other parts of the study were that this was on an island that had a lighthouse on it. Now the lighthouse uh, had management on the property too and was being managed by goats. Uh, so they were grazing the area where the chaff flower had been growing. Now this study took place four years after the closure of the lighthouse. And so uh, also the management had stopped. So the chaff flower had been able to grow and spread within that four year period. And, and since then had uh, negatively impacted the birds that were growing. So this paper recommends immediate management to protect the birds. And these are um, verified loca uh, locations of the Swinhoe's storm petrel. So you could see that it's all within the uh, known range of Japanese chaff flower and likely spreading the seeds around these areas too, um, if they don't become too entangled. Over here in Illinois, we did a study uh, to look at the effect of deer browse on chaff flower. And so we've set up uh, exclosure plots and open plots to look at the difference between plants that had been browsed and that weren't browsed. And what we found was that although there were some morphological differences in uh, growth, like uh, number of nodes and height, uh, there was little to no impact on the length of the flowering spikes <clears throat> on the browsed plants. So they're uh, fairly unfazed by uh, being browsed. It may be because some of the plants are actually, the plants are more palatable in the spring and are able to recover afterwards because this is what a flush would look like. And to a deer, this probably looks like a great salad bowl walking through and uh, just as much as you can eat and just go through. And so that's what we had noticed too, as the uh, deer were walking through uh, these areas like this, it was a clear direct path that you could see uh, the deer who were heading and uh, just grazing along the way. And so here's what some of the uh, browse looks like. And deer have a little pad underneath their, in their mouth that they press against. And so when they do, when you see a deer browse, it looks like this, it's all frayed at the end. We did notice that there was some uh, evidence of rabbit biting too, and that is a shear cut because uh, they're using their teeth to uh, cut it shear. So this would be um, a deer browse here because it's all frayed. And also um, uh, in uh, another study, uh, Neil 2018 had looked at uh, dragging deer fur through to prove that uh, deer fur was able to carry chaff flower seeds as they were passing through. Something interesting about uh, chaff flower and its ability to uh, spread is that it has two different, two generations of plants that are growing uh, side by side. So you have this year's flush right here growing alongside last year's seeds. And so you could imagine as the deer or other animals are coming through, uh, they're eating this year's plants, but they're, they're getting last year's seeds attached to them. And chaff flower really grows near trails and in open areas. So uh, after taking your dog out on a walk, just be sure to check their fur afterwards because uh, um, like Chris had shown in that photograph, all the uh, chaff flower seeds in the dog's hair. And then also another uh, uh, possible uh, spreading the way to spread it, it would be during hunting season and because uh, hunting season and seed drops seem to uh, correspond with each other. And then also just going on picnics too. Uh, so this would be like a little picnic area. You can see all this chaff flower off on the side here. Accidentally uh, throw your Frisbee uh, and it goes into the uh, side of the woods right here and you got to go climb through all that to get to it. That would be a um, great way to spread it all over. And then also the management that was going on too, um, is uh, mowing right here, right alongside it. Then just real quick, I wanted to hit on um, 
I did find some, uh, so on pathogens and in insects, I, I did find just a couple of a, a pathogen in one insect um, from its native range. Um, this is a Circospora fungus that uh, was found growing on Acaranthes japonica, on the chaff flower. And so this is a specialized uh, fungus in its native range that is a pathogen to chaff flower. And then another one is this gall, uh, gallang lepidoptera. So the uh, lepidoptera will uh, put its gall in here and then emerge later on eating the tissue out. And so this is Lasiophthora acaranthii. So this is a um, known uh, pair with the chaff flower in its native range. And then actual, an actual uh, uh, point from Korea um, on this, uh, E naturalist uh, website here, and uh, you can see it's gr growing right off of a, a chaff flower right here, and there's the little gall right there. Some observational findings within the invasion range. This is from uh, Illinois. These are photographs taken from Illinois. Um, potential um, pathogens that were documented. And these are the kinds of things that are really important and uh, helpful to uh, document too. So we can start seeing if there's anything that is uh, uh, able to hold back chaff flower or uh, control it. And, and then a solitary bee, and then a little uh, bombus too. So uh, uh, we have some pollinators here in Illinois that are using chaff flower for floral resources and uh, pollinating it. Some of these preventative measures, uh, just closing up here, uh, just avoid areas that look like this in the winter time, um, or try to uh, at least try to avoid them um, when you're going through them to avoid spreading all the seeds. So all this right here looks like that on, uh, on the seed heads. Use boot brushes if you see them, or just carry a little brush with you if you go hiking too. Um, they make these little brushes now that you can uh, uh, scrape all, scrape your boots with and um, just keep that on hand in your car so that you can uh, get all the seeds off you when you leave site. Clean your clothes uh, and check your, uh, check your uh, shoes at, uh, after hiking. Be diligent if you bring your pets and then also check the fur uh, of uh, the deer that you get or any game birds too uh, since um, we know that the seeds are sticking to the uh, feathers of birds and is likely a way that this is being spread.